All right, Chelsea fans, we're back with an AC Milan match review. That's right. We're going to be talking about Ruben Loftus-Cheek, Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang, and of course, we're going to be talking about Rolls, Reese, James. Absolutely phenomenal performance in a must-win match. Stay tuned. All right, where do we start? Look, Chelsea, we're in a must-win match. We're at the bottom of our group heading into the day. We're playing Milan, which you'd assume is probably the better of the teams in our group, right? We're pot one, they're pot two, and here we are in a weird situation that Graham Potter must win at home at Sanford Bridge. Thankfully, they had quite a few injuries uh, and things of na that nature that stacked the deck. But at the end of the day, Chelsea went out and dominated, winning 3 nothing. The first thing that we see here as the uh, UEFA website is glitching hard is that Chelsea did win 3 nothing with goals from uh, Fofana in the 24th minute, Aubameyang in the 56th minute, and Reese James in the 62nd minute, uh, completely dominating in this one. Uh, the lineup, all right, uh, back to, you know, one of the biggest conversation pieces in the Grand Potter era is who's he going to go with in his lineup? Keppa maintains a starting role as Mendy just returns to fitness. You had Fafana, Thiago Silva, and Koulibaly in a back three. You had Ruben Loftus-Cheek and Kovacic as your holding sixes. You had Reese James and Ben Chilwell as wingbacks, bombing wingbacks. Uh, this is very much reminiscent to early last season with Reese and, and Chili B, which you loved to see. And then you had Mason Mount and Raheem Sterling in behind Pierre Emerick Aubameyang. 3-4-3, uh, three, three, or is our friend CFC Central 3? Sam says it's a three box three. He talked about it in our match preview. So if you missed it, go check it out. It's worth a listen. Anytime Sam talks about this stuff, it is fantastic. Um, anyways, as you see, all eyes on Reese James in this match, which we're going to get to. Uh, but actually, the first person that I want to talk about is Ruben Loftus cheek. The Ruben Tata is back as friend of the pod. Joe tweets loves to say, and his game by numbers was one assist, 85% pass rate. One key chance is created 70 touches, two successful dribbles, two tackles, four interceptions, nine recoveries, eight ground duels, one hundred percent aerial duels, one, and he was fouled four times, which was the most. He was absolutely dynamic. He created a massive overload and an advantage for us in the midfield. I predicted in the match preview video that he would start we need Ruben to anchor this midfield. I hope he gets a run of games. You can't rely on Jorginho and Kovacic to play 90 minutes, and that's okay. But if we can rely on Ruben to play like this week in, week out, he is going to be a massive player for us this season. This is exactly what you want to see from a guy who we all love and who's had a battle injuries and battle challenges and battle loans. He's here to fight for his place at Chelsea. And if he keeps doing this, he's not going to have to fight very hard because he will get the minutes that he's earning. And we'll have to see, does Graham keep him in uh, at the weekend for Wolves or does he give him a break and just save him for the Champions League? Like what a, a blessing to have for this situation. Uh, the next one we want to talk about is Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang. A little bit of bants for the fans out there. Uh, this one's for you Gunners at Statman Dave tweeting out that Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang scores his first Champions League goal in 1,765 days when he scored twice for Borussia Dortmund against Real Madrid in December of 2017. Ladies and gentlemen, it is October 2022, almost five years later. Could you explain the gap in your resume, sir? Oh, you went to Arsenal? Apologies. Clearly... Uh, he was a much bigger player than they are as a club, and he's a better fit for Chelsea. Uh, we're an elite club. He's an elite mentality striker. Uh, he's clean cut. He shows up to training, puts in a shift. Things that didn't happen at Arsenal because they weren't big enough to match his ambition and, and ability. So you love to see it. Really happy for the guy. Uh, now two goals in two games. A proper striker? Sounds nice, especially after the failed Lukaku gamble. Uh, and then another milestone for the club. It's our 300th goal at Stamford Bridge in all European competitions. Just think about that. You play home and away in Europe. That's 300 goals just at home alone. All right. We got milestones to celebrate. Uh, other teams have to celebrate milestones uh, and empty trophy cabinets like Spurs. Thankfully for us at Chelsea, we have milestones that go along with the trophy. So uh, just a good one for uh, Aubameyang to get to celebrate. And as a club, 300 home goals in all European competitions is a massive achievement. Uh, don't let the people say we don't have history because they are wrong. But uh, the one that everyone wants to focus on, and understandably so, is Rolls Reese James. Uh, Statman Dave back again with another tweet saying uh, his game by numbers versus Milan, he had 99 touches, which again, Ruben had 70. He had 84% pass accuracy, seven ground duels, one, four long balls completed, two key passes, two crosses completed. He had two for two dribbles completed, assist, and a goal. 
what more do you want from a right back or a right wing back? This guy is a man on fire. And the way he stared into the fans' eyes after he scored and just was unemotional, was like, call Mate. This is our new standard. This is what Chelsea do. Now, we thrash European teams at home. This is this is what you want to see. He is leading by example, and everyone is getting in line to follow him. Uh, and then also his heat map. This is crazy. This much deep red is insane from a player. And the fact that it's in the defensive half, the middle, uh, third, and the attacking half is just a testament to his engine and work ethic. Uh, he is out there bombing up and down the flanks, uh, which I'm going to touch on here in a second, but you just can't uh, can't really... Uh, just ignore how good Reese is right now. Uh, another one that kind of gives you a European perspective from Squawka saying, since the start of last season, no defender has scored more goals in a top five European League and Champions League or Europa League than Reese James in 41 games in Europe. He has 11 goal, 11 assists and eight goals. Nobody's outscored him, so his eight goals are the best in all of Europe. And he has 19 goal contributions in total. Rules Reese. You know what I'm saying? Like, Again, you think he's good in England? Yeah, but he's also good in in Europe, which and if you're good if you're the best in Europe, you're pretty much the best in the world. There's not too many other continents that are pushing uh the the highest level of football like they are in Europe. So, best in Europe. I mean, the stats uh, stats are pointing to that. And then the fun one here for the bands, uh, expected Chelsea, huge friend of the pod. If you're not following them, make sure to go do it. They tweeted out that Rafael Leal, Wilfred Zaha, Leroy Sané, Human Song, and Harvey Barnes have attempted 11 dribbles against Reese James this season. They've succeeded just once. And by the way, while they're trying to figure out how to dribble past him or being switched to the other side of the field because they're getting nothing against him, he went ahead and fi- had five cool contributions as well. So he's a lockdown defender. He's an attacking threat. He's the complete package. Like England, number one, no doubt about it. And that's coming from a guy who has to play in the World Cup with the Americans. So uh, we don't want you to play him, but you you should play him. You'd be silly not to. All right, and then kind of to wrap it up here, we have our Dan of the Match poll, right? That's our man of the match because co-host Dan gets to do him. Uh, Look, Twitter limits you to four options. You probably could have had six or seven in this match because there are just that many good players. But Reese James walks it, absolutely walks it, but there's really no surprises there. Uh, Ruben Loftus-Cheek coming in with an 8.8, Thiago Silva with an 8.4, and Mason Mount 1.6. You probably could have had Kep in there for, you know, keeping the clean sheet. We, you know, didn't really talk about him in this one. Uh, but as far as I'm concerned, it's his to lose right now. I just think you can't pull him out, even though Mendy's back from fitness. Uh, if Kepa is going to continue to uh, to to make saves and, and keep clean sheets, I know we didn't at the weekend um, or the first Champions League match, but I think it's his to lose at this point. It doesn't mean Mendy's not going to get minutes with a match every three and a half days, but I mean, it's Kepa's number one spot to lose in my mind. And that's coming from the goalkeeper's union. All right, and then last, I just want to touch on some of the top-level stats from EpiRef and one of the best resources for stats out there. Uh, Chelsea with a 1.2 XG. Here's why that's good. We overperformed. If you ever overperform your XG, that is good. But what we need to do is continue to work that up to a 2.0 XG+. plus. Uh, that just shows that we have way more chances and opportunities to score goals which you want to see. Milan, we're at a 0.6, which is good. Uh, We've had a good run of keeping teams around or below that 0.5 mark, uh, which is pretty elite in that sense. Obviously, they have the formations, uh, the cautions, the substitutions. Uh, Some of the top line stats, 51% possession to 49. That was a lot closer than I thought. Uh, The shots on target is what I really want to highlight here. Chelsea have been getting 10, 11, 12 shots on target, or shots off, but only three or four on target. It's not good enough. Today, the fact that we had 60% of our shots on target is a huge improvement and needs to be the standard moving forward. Um, If you look at XG, which I think is most important uh, for, you know, kind of seeing who who is creating and who is a goal threat at Chelsea, you love to see Aubameyang at 0.4. Fofana also at 0.4, which makes sense because they both shot from inside the six. So pretty high likelihood that it's going to go in. You had Mason Mount contributing, Reese James, obviously Thiago Silva with his 
three consecutive headers, just being a beast on set pieces today, uh, which you like to see. And then the other one, which I think I'm trying to bring into the conversation is shot creating actions. Uh, it's essentially the offensive actions that directly lead to a shot, uh, passes, dribbles, drawing fouls. Um, so it's like the assist of the assist, you could say. Uh, Mason Mount is leading the charge, like not just today, but like consistently for Chelsea this season. A lot of people are ragging on him. I don't get it. Like he passes the eye test. He may not pass your stats test, but like Mason Mount is an absolute catalyst for this team. And he's so selfless. He puts the team before himself. So if you're mad, he's not greedy or selfish enough. He's creating space and opportunities for other people. And this stat shows that he created three opportunities for other people in the team to go score. That is good. Reese James is doing the same. So if you're if you're loving Reese James, you have to be loving Mason Mount because of what they're doing. Ben Chill. We didn't talk about him. I apologize. But if you want the in-depth match review, that's on our podcast. We do an hour-long podcast. It's out anywhere you get podcasts. Go check it out. London is blue. Full hour breakdown. Uh, ben Chill and Reese James are absolutely menacing AC Milan, which you love to see. Uh, again, Tiago Silva getting the shot, creating actions with his uh, headers in the box. Raheem Sterling. These are all the names that you want to see up there at that level. Uh, you want our attacking players creating shot, uh, creating shot opportunities for for their teammates. And then lastly, you got Kaparitha Balaga. Uh, he had uh, essentially he made a hundred percent save. He had the one save that he did. It was a big paw, uh, point blank shot, strong hands, kept it out. Uh, did well, like I said, didn't really have a lot going on, but it looked good from our perspective. So anyways, that's our match review. Kept it tight, kept it sweet on this one. Hope you enjoyed it. As always, uh, like and subscribe really helps us. If you want more content, check out the podcast. We're dropping four or five episodes a week, uh, hour-long episodes. You're going to love it with a lot of different voices and topics. So I'm out. As always, hope you're having a great day. Take care. Celebrate. We just dominate AC Milan in European competition. It's a great day to be a Chelsea fan. Enjoy it.